It's one of the games I want to watch. And like, I'm going to give it this for the favorites. I'm going to call it, you know, the, the drink meter. How many drinks do you need to feel good about this game? Ohio State's taking on Indiana after a bye week. You know, they've looked really good the last three weeks, struggled the first three weeks. And so, you know, it's like, does it kill the momentum? What, what honestly happens? Like, how does that play in to how this team is playing? Is a week off good for them? Do they get healthy? Sometimes when they're young teams, you want to just keep grinding and pressing on if you're the coach and not try to break that momentum cycle at all. Ohio State's favored by about 21. Got to head to Bloomington. And I give this probably a, maybe a one or two drink uh, before you feel good about the situation. Indiana will play really hard. Played Michigan State really tough last week. They've been battling. They just haven't gotten the results. And whether it's, uh, whether it's Michael Penix Jr. or Jack Tuttle, it doesn't matter. I don't think a lot for Ohio State, but hopefully they'll get challenged a little bit on defense and be able to kind of step up and see. The one big concern for me with this game is Indiana's middle linebacker, McFadden, very, very good player, heart and soul of the defense. He was ejected against Cincinnati for targeting. That kind of turned that game. Indiana was kind of controlling it until that point. And not that Cincinnati wouldn't have ultimately won, but I think if you talk to Luke Fickle and anybody at Cincinnati, they would say, hey, that was a big penalty, kept a drive alive, but it also removed the heart and soul and a guy who's a great blitzer. And so Tom Allen and that defense, they love to bring pressure. Big part of what they do. Young quarterback C.J. Stroud, offensive line has kind of moved around a lot. I think the skill position players at Ohio State, there are three wide receivers, Jackson Smith and Jigba, uh, Chris Olave, Garrett Wilson. You throw in Jeremy Rucker at tight end. Travion Henderson at running back. I don't think there's a better five in college football that you're going to be able to find, but it's going to hinge on the quarterback and the offensive line. And against a team that likes to blitz and bring pressure from kind of everywhere, this is going to be a big test. Understanding who's going to be free, when they're free for C.J. Stroud, when to get the ball out, and then also that offensive line being able to redirect and being able to pick up some of those blitzers. And understanding who's coming, like I said, McFadden, really, really good blitzer, very talented right there, the man in the middle uh, for the Hoosiers. So going to be critical for Ohio State to kind of pick that up and uh, and be able to move forward uh, as they keep cruising along. So big, big, big part of it for them. Penn State, Illinois. Penn State's favored by 24. Now, they're also coming off a bye. Their quarterback, they're coming off a loss. Um at Iowa, and Iowa ultimately lost the game, you know, subsequently they played to Purdue. Uh, but Sean Clifford was injured, their quarterback, been playing really good football. He's been taking care of the football better this year than he ever has in seasons past. Well, end of last year, he did a good job, and that's where kind of that momentum happened and began to turn around. Penn State, I think, is they're probably a top seven or eight team with Clifford. I think they're the second best team in the Big Ten with Clifford. And that's that's – no short praise either. They're really talented. They've got a great defense. Struggle running the football a little bit. They're going to beat Illinois. I give this like a one a one drink. You're probably feeling good after half a glass that Penn State's going to cover with Sean Clifford. Now, Taquan Roberson, different story. 14-point lead against Iowa. <laughs> Evaporates up in smoke. Not a great situation, obviously, that he had to deal with. Coming in, hostile environment. Very, very difficult. I get all of it. I understand it. He'd have, he's going to have to play loads better. And maybe he does. Maybe he does play light years better than he displayed against Iowa. Two weeks to get him ready should he be playing. They don't need Sean Clifford to play this game to win. But a couple of weeks from now, they're going to Columbus. It's going to be a night game. They're going to, it's going to be a scarlet out or whatever, scarlet to shoe, Columbus, Ohio. Penn State to have a chance to win that game needs Sean Clifford. James Franklin knows it. Everyone at Penn State knows it. It's no knock on their team. It's the fact that their starting quarterback has been playing really well for them this year, and they're going to need him to be able to beat what many people say is probably still the most talented team and maybe the best team in the Big Ten. So they're going to need that. So I I would not play Sean Clifford. Maybe you want to get him a series or two if he's good to go, but allow him to let that shoulder continue to heal. Give him some time and don't force him back into a situation where one shot, boom, your season could potentially be over. Give him some time to heal. Give him some time to rest. Uh, but if he does play, I want to see him look good, but get him out early. This is like a half drink, half drink before you're feeling good if you're, an, uh, if you're a Penn State fan, rather. Then we're going to go 
and pivot and head a little bit out to Ames, Iowa. You got Okie State, who's sitting there at eight, big victory against Texas, you know, feeling good about themselves, and they should. They should feel good. Ranked eighth in the country. Mike Gundy has them playing some terrific defense. They did a fantastic job against Texas in the second half, shutting them down. Uh, really, really good defense, forcing turnovers. A lot of three and outs did it. But Iowa, they lose to uh, – or Iowa State, they lose to Iowa early in the season, lose to Baylor. You know, and you're wondering, like, is it done? Is the season over for him? Well, Brock Purdy has been playing really, really good football since then. He's come around, begun to turn it. Brees Hall just had almost 200 yards rushing last week against Kansas State. And Kansas State's got a formidable defense. They're not the best, but they're not – it's not playing Kansas, for heaven's sake. Um, and then they're going to be going against a pretty talented defense uh, from Oklahoma State. It's interesting with this is the fact that Iowa State unranked and not – that the rankings are everything, but Iowa State unranked. They're they're laying seven points to the eighth ranked team in the country, albeit it's in Ames, and so usually that's worth three, maybe three and a half for a great home field. I don't know if Ames is rising to that level, but unbelievable to kind of see that line shocked me because I was thinking I'm like I'll, I'll take Iowa State. I like that bet. I thought they'd be getting probably three or four points. I'm not sure I like it with them getting seven. If you're Iowa State, this is probably a five or six, seven drink game for you because this is a chance for you to get back in it. You, know, you only have the one conference loss. You win this game, puts you squarely in the middle of the Big 12 race. And, you know, while your national championship, maybe playoff hopes are dashed, for the most part, you still have the ability to potentially – uh, go get a conference, go win a Big 12 conference title, and maybe even take down Oklahoma. Maybe you got to play them twice. I mean, who, who knows how that could all shake out? But really, really interesting game. Um, I'm, in, I'm going to enjoy this. Uh, seven point dogs, the number eight team in the country, taking on an unranked Iowa State team. So we'll see what Matt Campbell has in his bag of tricks and if he's able to get uh, the Cyclones back on the winning track. 